Hey, sit down. Sit down. What are you, what are you coming up here to do? You want, you want to come take over the service? Uh, huh? The service. What, what do you want? What? I just want a prayer around. Get out of here. Can I get, can I get a little grace? No, no, you can't. No, you, you get right out of here. Get him out of here. Understand? Drag this bozo out. If you don't know who this is, this is Steven Anderson, this pastor. He's an extremist. Oh, my God, dude, this guy is crazy. This is actually a little bit older. I've covered this before. This is from January 2022, I think. Um, but it's making its rounds on Reddit again. So I figured I'd talk about it again, because why not? It's a good way to, to reintroduce Steven Anderson and his weird little cult, the NIFB, before talking about what they're up to right now. I think if I could describe him in a word, it'd be violent. He has an interest in a violent action against people he views to be his enemy. So let's watch the whole thing. Let's just start from where we were and we'll keep going through. Watch this. Quick interjection. I won't take long. I just wanted to tell you guys, YouTube's algorithm operates off of a few factors. Watch time, whether or not you subscribe, and whether or not you like something. So if you really want to help my channel, I would appreciate it if you guys watch the video to the end. If you don't watch it to the end, just watch a little bit longer than you would have otherwise. I would appreciate that very much. All right, let's get back to the video. Yeah, it was January 5th, 2022, when this came out. Pull him out. Hey, Let help him, him out. Get him, him out. And you know, they're, they're not legally allowed. Look, they're grabbing the dude and dragging him. They're not allowed to do that legally. Jehovah's Witnesses deal with it completely differently. They will circle you. A bunch of elders circle you and they lock arms and they walk out together, like with you in the middle of the circle. Or they'll call the police and let the police do it. Like I said, this is a violent cult that has an interest in committing violence against the people that they don't like. And this is just an opportunity that they had. Pull him out. Hey, let help him, him out. Let Get him, him out. Him and you know what? If anybody wants to come up here and take over the service? We'll throw you out of here, buddy. This church is not a free-for-all. This isn't an open mic. This isn't a karaoke bar. Okay? I'm the man of God here. I meet the qualifications. I run this church. And if you don't like it, then get out. This is not some church where every first-time visitor and brand-new believer and people who've never even read the Bible are going to come up and take over the service. Dude, check it out. It's Agent Smith from The Matrix. He's got two Agent Smiths from The Matrix. Interesting, right? A couple of people that have, like, sunglasses on and dark suits and stuff. Weird. And take over the service. Not happening. Okay? If you want that kind of watered-down leadership... Go to some house church with your Amish buddies and sit around the coffee table with your coffee clutch. Look, did you ever consider the possibility maybe the dude didn't know? Maybe he was new and if you just informed him, he would have walked and sat back down and called it quits? Why does he have to be angry and violent at every opportunity? Why is he like this? How did he get like this? For the record, he's also part of the Quiverful movement. I don't know if you know about this, but Quiverful is the idea that God wants you to have as many children as humanly possible. I think Stephen Anderson, I'm sorry, I think Stephen Anderson has somewhere in the vicinity of like 14 kids or something. It's a lot of kids, dude. Yeah, he doesn't use birth control at all. His wife doesn't use birth control. They just keep popping those bad boys out. So, God, it's crazy, man. I feel so bad for those kids, seriously. They never had a chance. Never had a chance buddies and sit around the coffee table with your coffee clatch this is a new testament church what the hell is a coffee clatch real pumpkin j coffee clatch from german claff latch or something cuff cuff i guess cuff is how it's pronounced is a woman's gossip meeting over coffee and cake usually around 4 p.m okay this is news to me literally never heard of that term in my entire life that's really interesting we have a bishop here. We have an overseer here. Like it or lump it. And if you don't like it, feel free to get up and leave the service at any time. Or 50% of people walk out. I don't care. Because you know what? I'm not going to pastor a oneness cult. Okay, God, do you know? It's going to be a Trinitarian cult in that case. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have heard this term. Oneness means you don't believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You believe that God is God, and Jesus is Jesus. Individuals. Jehovah's Witnesses are a oneness group. The opposite of oneness would be Trinitarian, the belief that they're all, you know. That's it, right? Trinitarian is the opposite of oneness, I believe. Somebody fact check me on that. It'll, it'll appear on the screen here when this is edited. I'm not 
not going to pastor a oneness cult. Amen. I'm not going to pastor a Pentecostal church. I'm the pastor of a Baptist church. Amen. And if you're not a Baptist, then get out. Amen. Just so violent and angry. Why? What? How, why is he like this? I don't understand. I just like I'm walking into this assuming you've never heard of the guy. I'm sure some people probably have, but I'm going to start from zero with this. OK, this is one of his more famous clips. 2009 AP News captured this. Check this out. This is him talking about Barack Obama in one of his sermons. I hate Barack Obama. You, you say, well, you just mean you, you don't like what he stands for. No, I hate the person. Amen, amen. Oh, wait, well, you mean you just don't like his policy? No, I hate him. Now, I'm going to prove this from the Bible tonight, why I should hate Barack Obama. Why God wants me to hate Barack Obama. Why God hates Barack Obama. That's insane, dude. That is insane. I don't know if you guys remember the Westboro Baptist Church. He's completely disconnected from them. He's not affiliated in any way. But Westboro Baptist Church used to do absolutely terrible stuff. Like, they'd go to the grave sites or the funerals of soldiers and they would protest and say that the soldiers burning in hell and stuff like that or they would go to like gay pride parades and they would say absolutely vile things on their signs you know slurs and everything absolutely terrible like i said unconnected from steven anderson but it's almost like steven anderson has found himself in a similar position he's very similar to the westboro baptist church Although I think Westboro Baptist did it for attention, I think Steven Anderson does it because he likes to be violent and, and vile. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Is Steven Anderson playing this up, or does he really believe that this is the right way to do it? Listen to this one, 2014. No hope will ever be allowed on this church as long as I'm the pastor here. Never! This guy has serious, deep problems. He went on... Um, God, I don't remember what USA Today. Yeah, that was it. He went on USA Today back in uh, 2014 to talk to them. And it went really interesting. Not as you'd expect it to have gone. The dude asked him what seemed like loaded questions, but Steven Anderson just accepted it. Listen to this. December 6, 2014. Have you always hated gay people? Is it something your father taught you or is it something that you came to on your own? So any normal preacher who's not trying to burn every bridge from here to Texas would say, I don't hate gay people. You're misunderstanding. I want them to come to Christ, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's how Jehovah's Witnesses frame it. Though they very obviously don't like gay people. So let's see how Steven Anderson reacts to this question that was very obviously making a lot of assumptions inherent in the question, right? No, I haven't always. You know, I grew up in a Christian home, but it wasn't until I read the Bible cover to cover at age 17 that I discovered the truth of what the Bible really says. So there you go. I mean, he just accepted it. Yes, I do. I do hate gay people. Thank you for pointing that out. This is his opportunity to talk about how gay people are evil and he hates them. Jesus, dude. Now, d doesn't the Ten Commandment, isn't the first commandment, thou shalt not kill? Because Stephen Anderson calls for the death of gay people. Just draw that little connection for you there. Again, any anybody in their right mind would say, I don't wish death on anybody, even if they do. No, the first commandment is thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay, but it, um, it, of course, is thou shalt not kill a, one of the commandments? Yes, it is, but what you have to understand is that the Bible commands that certain people be put to death, not by me, not by Christians. It's obviously not my job or the job of any Christian to go out and kill anybody, and I've I feel like that's not obvious. I feel like I'm not really sure if that's what you believe or not. This is disturbing as it gets. Buddy, and I've never taught anything like that. But rather that the government's job is to punish criminals and to execute those who've committed capital crimes. And being gay is a capital crime in his mind. And according to the Bible, homosexuality is a capital crime, and I didn't write the Bible. Jesus Christ, dude. Well, the old law, the 613 commandments, written in the Old Testament, talk about being gay as a, a capital crime. But that law was done away with when Jesus came back, or when Jesus came in the first place. He fulfilled it. It's done, over with. That's why you don't avoid wearing cotton and linen blends. That's why you're okay with eating shellfish and pork and putting two seeds in the same hole in the whole nine yards. 613 commands all lumped in together. And you don't ignore you or I'm sorry, and you ignore all of them except that one. That's the one you want, right? That's the one you zero in on.
When Jesus came back, he did away with the old law and replaced it with two new laws. Love God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two new laws Jesus put in, you know, into practice or whatever. Do you know what he said about gay people? Nothing. Jesus didn't say a word about the LGBT community. Isn't it interesting how hate preachers will find a pretext for their hate? There is a verse in the Bible to back up any moral position. People will find that verse to back up what they believe. It is impossible to base your moral beliefs on the Bible because it is such a broad book written across so, such a long stretch of time by so many different people of varying backgrounds and degrees and wealth and status and position. It's impossible to not cherry pick. And we, we know what's in this guy's heart now, right? We know how he feels. We've found the thing that he thinks about 24-7, killing gay people. Why else would he zero in on this verse that doesn't even apply anymore, that was done away with when Christianity came into existence? Why would he zero in on it? And just that one out of the 613. Because he hates gay people, pl plain and simple. I don't know how else to interpret this. So uh, I told you we were going to look at some newer NIFB uh, videos. Um, that is Stephen Anderson. That His church is the New Independent Fundamentalist Baptist Church. That's what NIFB stands for, right? And a while back, he had a Make America Straight Again conference. MASA is what it was called. Make America Straight Again. They held it in Florida, I think. And uh, there was this whole pumpkin saga thing where, yeah, anyway. Yeah, all the atheist YouTubers got together and did this whole campaign to try to bring attention to their Make America Straight Again conference. So anyways, that's Steven Anderson. That's his church. That's a type of thing that they do. This is Jason Graber, another member of the NIFB. In mid-May 2023, he had some things to say about this subject. Listen to this. Any parents that would have their child uh, have, a, have a transgender surgery done on them, any parent that would do that, they just need to be shot in the back of the head. Right, right. They need to be convicted in trial and immediately shot in the back of the head. Jesus Christ, dude. That is insane. That is psychotic. I don't know what other word to use for this. For the record, right now we're looking at the most extreme of the most extreme. This doesn't represent normal society by any stretch of the imagination. So I don't want you to feel discouraged by this type of thing. This doesn't appear to be where society is moving right now. This is just some extreme nutcases with disproportionate amount of power that I want to talk about. That's all. So don't don't get down about this. But it's interesting that he said that, you know, any person that would allow their kid to have a trans affirming surgery should be taken out. That's not happening. That has never happened in the history of the United States. Now, there are some cases of 15, 16, 17 year olds having top surgery in the United States. It's not super common, but it does happen. I think there's like 203 top surgeries that the New York Times could track down in the past couple of years. 203. You know how many rhinoplasties there were? How many nose jobs kids under 18 received? Let me look. Just be sure about this. In 2020, nearly 230 cosmetic surgeries, full-blown cosmetic surgeries, were administered to minors. Wait, is that right? I'm sorry, let me just check. Yeah, okay, here we go. Um, according to the American Society of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgeons, ASPS, in 2020, nearly 230 cosmetic surgeries and 140,000 non-invasive cosmetic procedures like Botox injections, for example, were performed on teens ages 13 to 19. 230,000 invasive procedures. Rhinoplasties, you know, nose jobs, uh, lip injections, cheek fillers, uh, you know, cheek thinners. I don't know what you call the opposite of a cheek filler. All this stuff is done to kids all the time. It's been happening to kids for decades. Where were you, Jason Graber? Where have you been? Why weren't you talking about this decades ago? 
kids getting plastic surgeries. Beauty pageants for 10-year-olds. Why weren't you talking about this then? Because he never cared about it. You know what he cares about? Hating trans people. Hating members of the LGBT community. Plain and simple. Like I said, zero, zero bottom surgeries on anybody under 18 in the United States ever. It doesn't happen. It's illegal. Always has been. Top surgeries, on the other hand, only uh, in the hundreds, low hundreds over the past few years. It's hard to know exactly how many how many it is, but it's not over 300. So, yeah, I, I just like I don't know what he's complaining about, but he lives in this fictitious world where everybody is trying to give their kid trans surgery and all this stuff. It's just garbage, all of it. And he's looking for a pretext, once again, like Steven Anderson, looking for a pretext to hate people. And then we can string them up above a bridge and, and, and so that the public can see the consequences of, of that kind of wickedness. Yeah. That's not happening. That quote-unquote wickedness you're describing is fictitious. It exists only in your head. And so there should be no excuse to not put these people to death. No excuse whatsoever. And uh, uh, go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter number 4. And let me tell you, there are very, very few people out there in the world today that are actually fighting the spiritual fight. I want you to go ahead and find me another preacher in Spokane that preached the message where they said that these, that these child molesters, that these child butchers, that these fa all the LGBTQ people, people that desire strange flesh, that they should all be put to death in a public execution by the government. Find me the preacher that says that. It looks like we found one. You know, the NIFB talks about this all the time. Absolutely psychotic. Seriously. What is wrong with these people? How did they get to this point in their lives? To be honest, I, I, I think the next video explains exactly how they got there. <laughs> Probably not, but let, just check this out. Early June 2023, just like a month after what he said in the last video, he says this. There, there's, there's all kinds of parents out there that say, whatever you do, don't spank your children. You well, science says that it causes anxiety and depression disorders. There's a higher rate of anxiety and depression disorders for kids that, that are spanked. You should not spank them. You should find a better way. Put them in timeout. Ground them. Whatever. You, you just can't spank your children. If you, if you spank your children, you're going to damage them psychologically. That's correct. Yes. You know, and there's all kinds of books that have been written about this and all kinds of psychologists and all kinds of, of, of people out there that are telling you, oh, you know, you can't spank your children. Okay, well, you know, I'm here to tell you that I was spanked my entire childhood. Okay, my, my, my dad used a belt my entire childhood. And I turned out fine, okay? No, you did not. I'm sorry to tell you, but this is a perfect case study right here, dude. He's talking about how he turned out fine because he was hit when he was a little kid. No. No, no, brother. You didn't. You did not turn out fine. <laughs> He's laughing like even he knows it's not true. <laughs> fine. <okay. laughs> I'm not psychologically damaged because my dad spanked me. Yes, you are. Well, I don't know if that's why you're psychologically damaged, but you definitely are. Absolutely. So anyway, <laughs> Jesus, dude, these people, they need help for real. These people need help. I mean, just to round it out so you have some context for this, who this group is, check this one out. This is Tommy McMurtry. He's another member of the NIFB, June 2019. This is when we did the whole pumpkin saga thing. He came out and he said this. I just really want to hammer home how they feel about the LGBT community as if it's not already clear. Just one more clip. Check it out. We know there have always been, we know they have always been around. We've read the book of Genesis. Okay. Nobody's saying they're never around, but there was a time when society, when our country saw them for what they were and they put them in their place six feet under. And unfortunately we have forgotten that in our country. That's just wrong, dude. Absolutely depraved stuff. What is wrong with these people? Honestly, I know he, the, you know, I know the uh, Jason Graber talked about being spanked as a kid and how he's not psychologically damaged, but I'm hard pressed to believe that spanking could bring this kind of psychosis on. These people just love to hate. They are desperate to hate. They're desperate to find violence anywhere they possibly can, even when they're 
kicking somebody out of their church. The guy wasn't struggling, it didn't seem. He wasn't, like, arguing with them or fighting them or anything, was he? Pull him out. Hey, Let help him, him out. Get him, him out. And you know what? If anybody wants to come up here and take over the service? We'll throw you out of here, buddy. They just grab the guy and throw him. They're looking for violent interaction. These people need help, man. Real Pumpkin J. Steven Anderson's wife is German. Having coffee at 4 p.m., especially on Sunday, is a German cultural thing. He references it in a, uh, in a denigrating way. Interesting. I did not realize that. That is fascinating. There's a He has a website. Oh, where is it? Steven Anderson has been banned in like a hundred something countries, hasn't he? I forget exactly how many. No. God. This dude is Steve Anderson. Now, wouldn't it suck to have the same name? That's probably why it goes by Steve instead of Steven. What a nightmare that would be. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. This is the website I was looking for. The Steven, it's stevenandersonfamily.com. And it's, it looks like it's just like a WordPress thing or maybe a Squarespace thing. I don't know. But look, they've got modest swimwear linked here. Cute and covered. Oh, my God, dude. It's terrible. Curriculum? No way. Oh, my God. You can get their homeschool curriculum. Yeah, I think she homeschools all like what? 50 of her kids, however many there are. Oh, that's super fascinating. Who wrote it, I wonder? I'm going to have to look at this for one of my channels later. YouTube, blog, let's check their blog. Oh, yeah, this is what I was looking for. This is a good stuff. This is his wife right here, if you've never seen her before. This is Oliver. This is Oliver, um, and it's a brand new baby, it looks like. Video came out 10 months ago. Wow, 10 months ago. Zuzana Anderson is her name, yeah. Or Zuzana, I think, maybe? I don't remember how it's pronounced. And I thought I should introduce him. This is Oliver. Oliver's eight weeks old now. He was born on the last day in May, and he's been a really, really good baby. Must be like a year and a half old now. This is number 12. There you go, number 12. Seven sons, five girls, so he's the seventh boy. Ali, can you give us a smile for the camera? You know what fascinates me? The fact that there's such a perfectly even split between boy and girl. It's effectively random, right? How did that evolve? That perfect exact split. That's really impressive. 49.72% are female. And 50.28% are male. That's fascinating. So anyways, yeah, that's Zhujana, I think is her name. Again, uh, forgive me if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but 12 kids still having them. That she is, boy, I don't know how she does it, dude. Honestly, insane. Cute kid though, right? I'm fake. God, look at those eyes. My God, look at those things. And those cheeks, you want to pinch them clean off his face, right? The seventh boy. Ali, can you give us a smile for the camera? A big smile? A big smile? Well, he's kind of smiling there. I had mentioned in the past that I had struggled the older I got and the more kids I had with my milk supply. You're going to talk? Oh, yeah. They're also conspiracy theorists. They will not use formula because they think that the big government is drugging it or some other nonsense to turn the kids trans. I don't even know. Steven Anderson watches a lot of Alex Jones, so just any bizarre beliefs Alex Jones has, ascribe them to Steven Anderson, almost certainly. Anyway, wow, that's fascinating, man. Yeah, it's a Blogspot website. Look at this. This is their family. Crazy. 12 kids, dude. 12 kids. You got to feel so bad for these kids, man. They, they never had a chance. And they honestly believe in hitting their kids. Like, that's a fundamental piece of their belief system. They must hit their kids. Anyways, yeah, fascinating stuff, man. Crazy.